What's good, St. John? Sorry to be a little informal, but welcome to the season premiere of SJU Brawl. We are back. I'm Anthony Farrar. This and is I'm Oscar, Oscar Cifuentes, and we are going to start off with the review of WWE Hell in a Cell. We also have Anthony Preventa, but unfortunately he's not here right now, so we're just going to take it into you. Let's get ready to brawl. Welcome oh back, my. ladies and gentlemen. We are in season two of SJU. You brawl. I am so excited to be back. How about you? I cannot believe that we got another season. More importantly, excuse me if I'm out of it right now. We just finished watching Hell in a Cell. Oh my god. I and couldn't believe it. And before we get into it, we'd like to introduce to you a new segment on SJU Brawl called How'd, How'd it, it go? go? Where we watch the latest pay-per-views and review them after they happen. So we just finished watching Hell in a Cell and we are... In shock, we so, are just in shock right now. So if the let's just let's just go let's just go straight into the matches. So we started off with a tag team Hell in a Cell match: New Day versus the Usos. That was a great start, great match. Everything was coming out of both teams. They really had a lot of aggression, yeah, and it really showed intensity, brutality, ruthlessness. I. I'm just in shock, you know. I have a, I have highlights noted down from this match. You know, let's start it off with the dent they left in the cell. So Big E had speared, I think either Jimmy or Jay. What I, think it was J I think it was Jay. Had speared Jay into the steel cage and literally dented the f the the foundation. It looked like kind of like this was the, this was the cell before, and then after the spear was like that. Yeah. So he left a pretty big dent in there. Besides that too, there was just a lot of aggression. The new day weren't the positive. You know, positivity, power people like they usually are. A lot of aggression. We saw a lot of uh, intensity, especially from Xavier Woods. You know, that he brought out different instruments, multiple trom trombones. He, at one point, had a big handful of kendo sticks they would use to just trap one of the Usos in, the, in one corner of the cell. I was... I was... I was... I'm, I can't even get my words out. Wow. It's weird, though, because the candlesticks were used literally for him and against him. He was using them to his advantage, but it was also his disadvantage. The welts that that man is going to have after tonight, oh, my God. Yeah, because the oh Usos literally had him handcuffed on the pole. It reminded me of Breaking Point 2009 between Randy Orton and John mm -hmm. Cena. He, Orton just You said that yourself during the match. He just, like, that. bashed his... His entire abdomen area to shred. It's amazing. So, Xavier, Xavier Woods, you are a true hero, my friend. And before we get to the next match, let's hear what Tony Preventa has to say about it. The tag team match, well, that way that started, there was a lot of violence. And you know what? Um, the Usos were just trying to show their vicious side to their gimmicks, and it truly worked out. And just the fact of Kofi Kingston not being in the ring, the whole... Like, it, it just, it, it really exposed the weakness that the New Day had without Kofi Kingston. That was just my thing. I, I like the match. I like the Usos winning the titles, so we'll go on from there. <sighs> my God, that was just intense. So the next match we have up so is... So the next match we had on the card was Rusev versus Randy Orton in a singles match. So you fell asleep, didn't you? I did. Kind of fell I'm asleep. not going to lie. Because this rivalry is just pointless, you know? I will say, though, even though Rusev lost again and he wasn't put over, I will say at least this time they had an effort of making him actually look strong. Especially since the last match didn't even happen from what yeah. I remember. So... Nothing much to say about that. Next up, we had AJ Styles, Baron Corbin, and Ty Dillinger in a triple threat match for the United States Championship. Slow that start, great ending. Though. Oh my god. It was like, I was like, those, I had just woken up mm. when that match started. So, yeah, it was kind of slow, but it picked up and picked up. Baron Corbin, I ne I'm never disappointed in Baron Corbin. You know, I always say he always got a chip on his shoulder, and he brought it tonight. The thing about this match is definitely having Ty Dillinger going against AJ Styles. Ty Dillinger had a lot of offense. A lot of offense from all of them, but especially with Ty, Ty Dillinger being the underdog, he definitely was able to bring out more offense. He was able to show off that he can hang with the oh, likes of AJ Styles. He, he literally reversed a Styles clash. I haven't seen that done yet. That has not been shown off in a while, and honestly, seeing that was amazing. But other than that, I'd say it's a great win for Baron Corbin because he was at least able to get that done and able to take out both... AJ Styles out of the match, literally throwing him out and literally having Ty Dillinger for the count. So congratulations, Baron Corbin, the new United States champion. Next up, Natalia versus Charlotte. That was an that was an okay match, you know. Yeah, it was a good. It was a good. It was a steady match. Let's put it that way. It was a steady match, and it could have gone on a little longer. A good offense on both of them, but it, it was just. It, let's be honest. It looked more like Natalia 
just attacking Charlotte's knee. The disqualification is what really ruined it, folks. It was yeah. the disqualification after out of everything. So yeah. I just you know moving but, on. You know, it's not your team. But and next up we had Shinsuke Nakamura versus Jinder Mahal for the WWE Championship. Jinder, I will say Jinder had put on good offense in this match. It was about time we had a match that we were able to showcase some stuff. Yeah, and uh, you know Nakamura, he's always he's always got his offense on him, especially when he's fighting off the Singh brothers. And you know, even after they got ejected, he had it in that Kinshasa, but Jinder was still able to kick out. And especially still- with the Singh brothers getting kicked out, and he was able to hold his own. It was amazing. And I wish, I wish Shinsuke got it tonight, but that doesn't mean he can't get it at Survivor Series if three times in a row. And you know, if if th- three times a charm, it definitely could happen. Probably, probably, probably. And we also had the Fashion Files. We have to throw that in. <laughs> Best segment of the night, of course. It was pretty funny. I'll give him that. We had Bobby Roode versus Dolph Ziggler. Good match. Dolph Ziggler definitely was showing off this new persona of, you know. Yeah, because he had his entrance music, but then they just cut it. And, and then he just walked, walked out, out. Pitch black. No appealing to the ring. No appealing to the crowd. No, you know, going through the ropes and just yelling at the crowd. Nothing, you know. But, but good match, though. And yes. a great way to solidify Dolph Ziggler as a heel. So, Especially after that after-match attack, after Bobby Roode got the win. Mm-hmm. So I can definitely see this rivalry getting more intense as the weeks go on. Exactly. And then now, finally, the match of the is, night. This is the match we've been wanting to talk about for the last... What, 10 minutes since it ended? You know, the thing is, is that when you have a match with Shane McMahon, you know it's always going to be good. You know he's going to jump somewhere. You know he's going to fly. But where was he going to go? He literally had everybody having heart palpitations for the entire 20 I minutes. Still, I'm still having heart palpitations I'm still in right shock. now. I'm still Jesus in shock. Jesus Christ. So let's, break, so let's break it down. Even before the match got started, Shane just dove out of the cell attacking Owens, showing off some very impressive martial arts moves, you know. He had he had that judo kick. And that he, judo kick, he was like a shooting star spinning around. Oh, my God. And then he had, when he reversed a pop-up power bomb into a, trying to get a triangle arm bar. Mm-hmm. That was just incredible, you know. He misses a shooting star press, then he goes for a frog, then Kevin Owens goes for a frog splash, nails it, then they're doing some more offense, then brings out the table. The crowd said they wanted tables, they brought out the tables. And sure enough, Kevin Owens was going for a, bo- what would they call that? Cannonball. He goes for a cannonball ball and goes through the table without Shane McMahon there and breaks it literally perfect in, literally perfectly in perfect two. break like you see Kevin just boom and the table just is literally made an L picture perfect and then Shane started smashing him in the with, back with, with a small with head. A half with the half of the table it was great he, he landed a brilliant coast to coast that was amazing you know, we haven't seen beautiful. one of those since WrestleMania. And then so. after the coast to coast, Shane looked up, and you know everything was looking up you for knew, Shane McMahon. You knew Shane, you knew Shane had the idea. Once his eyes peeked up, game over. Shane went up there. Kevin Owens followed. They- this is where this is where the hard complication started because they're on top of the cell and they're battling each other. They're putting each other like on the steel, like the chain link steel. And it's just not giving. It's but not. that's what's giving everybody, like, that's what's getting your heart racing. That's what's getting your blood flowing. That's just, oh, man, I, I still, I was getting nervous. Between that. all the Mick Foley and Triple H and Undertaker Hell in a Cell matches that you've seen, you knew, okay, when is it going to snap? It just never did. It just never did. And it, it did. kept you thinking, wait, this can't be it. Kevin Owens comes down. Kevin Owens goes to a table from Shane after Shane Hits him and slams his head into the steel. Kevin Owens falls back. Boom. Goes through the table. Ten a feet. Ten feet slam. Shane was about to show mercy. Then you saw he was like, no. no. I got to finish this off. So he clears the other another announced table. Puts Kevin Owens on top. Starts climbing. And you, we all know what happens when Shane starts climbing. He's, he starts climbing. You he's, know he's going to say his prayers. He's going to do the sign of a cross. And but fall. what shocked us was the end result. So Shane jumps off. It looked like Kevin had moved and Shane goes crashing through. Little do we know that it wasn't Kevin moving by himself. It was Sammy Sammy Zayn. Zayn. Sammy Zayn had pulled Kevin off the announce table, allowing Shane to just crash through the the announce table. Sammy Zayn, his former best friend, Kevin Owens' former best friend, helps him from literally being seconds away from death. And the surprising thing, Sami Zayn takes Kevin Owens and throws him on top of Shane McMahon for the one, two, three. Once again, Kevin Owens is victorious. 
And it's just oh, it's <laughs> such a mind-boggling match. They said before on a pre-show this was going to be a match they were going to talk about for ages, and they did. Oh, this is, this will be one for the ages, man. This is just because this is something you wouldn't have expected from Sami Zayn. I know his years in NXT, his years of being the underdog. I guess there they finally caught up to him. Is now I guess Shane set him off back on SmackDown. Mm. You know it was amazing. But before we end off, we have to take it back to Tony Baventa and let's hear what he has to say about the final match. I'm telling you right now, this could possibly be Shane McMahon's final time he's ever doing that. He cannot be going off. He cannot be going off the cell anymore if he's gonna take be taking the spots like that. When I saw him hit the table, it looked like he was dead. And the fact that at his age he's still willing to do this is a problem. You know, the worst thing Shane McMahon could do now is be a new is be a new uh, Ric Flair. Ric Flair in his later years wrestling, it just shouldn't have happened. So hopefully Shane learns from this and moves on and possibly doesn't go th go through with these spots again. As for Sami Zayn, I really don't know what's going to happen with Sami Zayn. I hope that they plan this stuff well. And maybe they do something with him and Kevin Owens where they could possibly team up and do something big on SmackDown Live. Because it's very important that these guys are ingrained to do something big. Because SmackDown needs something fresh and something new to carry it on all the way to Survivor Series and, and into the incoming year. Jesus. Couldn't have oh, said man. it better myself. Well said, my friend. Well said. Well, that's been it for this section of How to go. go. I've been Anthony Ferrara. I'm Oscar Cervantes, and this has been S.J.U. Bro! Bro!